Okay, so today I'm embarking on a new adventure. No 2008 Nissan Titan project, no 1992 Nissan 300ZX. Today is all about the shop. I am going to paint the floor. I got this Rust-Oleum, rock solid. It's like a epoxy paint. If you've tuned in on this particular episode, you've probably already watched a couple of these types of videos. Now, so have I. I've watched other people's videos and what I've pretty much found out is the most important part of painting your garage floor, shop floor, what have you, with this type of product is prep. Prep, prep, prep. You gotta get this floor clean, you gotta get it degreased, you gotta get all the raised areas leveled, you gotta fill in the cracks if you want a good outcome. Okay, so I have no cracks in this floor, good. Um, if you do have cracks, uh, I do believe that Rust-Oleum also sells a crack filler that, that, according to the YouTube videos, it works pretty good. Um, but again, prep, prep, prep. So, how to prep it? Well, first off, Rust-Oleum also sells a degreaser. So, you degrease and scrub the heck out of your floor. Degrease, wash, degrease, wash. Get it dry. After that you etch it. Now there's a, in this kit comes with instructions obviously, comes with the etching. So it's enough to etch whatever floor you're doing depending on what size you got. I've got the two and a half garage. I believe it covers about 500 to 600 square feet. Comes with two foam rollers to roll on the product. Comes with these paint chips that you throw on the, the paint on the floor. And then it also comes with the, this says uh, some type of poly burst pouch, something or other. It's like an epoxy of sorts, I believe. Anyways, comes with that as well. Enough product, again, to, to do about 500 to 600 square feet, which is two and a half. In most cases, two and a half garage length, if I'm saying that right. So, anyways. Prep, prep, prep. I'm going to wash this floor. I'm going to scrape the floor. I'm going to degrease the floor. I'm going to wash it again. I'm going to etch it. I'm going to wash it again. If I need to etch it some more, I'll do that. Then after that, we'll be applying the paint. Just get the surface wet real quick. Then I'm gonna throw down that degreaser and start scrubbing. So I put my degreaser in this little roundup container, little sprayer. I found it to work pretty good. And then you just cover the entire floor surface. You're in the garage you should be in a pretty well ventilated area if you're not maybe wear a mask Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, I don't know the real rules of this, but I wash it down after I scrubbed it with the degreaser. I'm going to wash it down and I'm going to scrub it again and then I'm going to wash it again. And then I'll squeegee all the water out, make sure there's not too much soap. And then uh, we will uh, go to the next phase, which is etching. <clears throat> Okay, so now I've degreased, scrubbed, scrubbed, scrubbed some more, I washed that down, scrubbed some more, and then washed it out. So far, most of the soap has, uh, looks like it's gone away. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeegee this baby out. If you don't have one of these, I would suggest getting one. Um, it makes things a lot easier when you're trying to get the water out of your garage or shop. Uh, if not, borrow one. So I'm going to squeegee now and usually people, people use different techniques on this. I'm pulling the water away from the other side of the garage right now because it's full. Some people say, well, you need to push. You're not, you're not pushing the water. Well, on the edges, I usually pull like I'm doing now. And then after I do that, I'll push the water out. As you can see, a lot of the water has been pushed out of the garage and this allows the floor to dry a lot quicker. Well, there you go. I'll let that dry a little bit and then I'll begin with the etching. Okay, the floor has been degreased, has been washed and scrubbed and all that. Now it's time to etch. That little kit in the Rust-Oleum box that I was showing you earlier comes with two packages of this etching. Um, it's two gallons per package. So two gallons of water and one package of etching. Now I use a pump sprayer kind of like this, kind of like you spray bugs or you spray weeds. <clears throat> and I will put one of these in there and two gallons and begin to etch. Uh, now I'll wet it down, I'll mist down the, the surface first and then I'll put the etching on, let it set for a little while, start scrubbing it, and then go from there. Of course, we'll wash that off and squeegee that off before we get, begin to paint, okay? Stay tuned, here we go. <clears throat> Now this etching, there's, they're like little crystals of sorts. So I'm going to pour this whole bag in there. Maybe put a gallon of water, mix that around, and then pour the remainder of water in there. want to get that etching, those crystals, you want those to dissolve. Kind of the whole goal in this. So I'll get this mixed up and then we'll start to spray the stuff on. Now I'm going to try to get a nice even spray of this floor with this etching. You don't have to use a pump sprayer like this. You could use a plant water. I don't know if you've seen those 
things, but uh, in other videos, you'll see some people using a, uh, a plant water thing. Water. Is that a word? Water. That just sounds weird, doesn't it? Anyways, you get what I'm trying to say here. Just get a nice, even surface. You've got two bags of this stuff, and it goes a long way. So go ahead and get the floor saturated with this etching. If you don't have either one of those two things, I guess you could probably just put all that etching with two gallons of water in a bucket and then just uh, mix it up. Make sure that etching's diluted and then just pour it on there because you're going to scrub it anyways. So anyways, whatever your method is, just make sure you get a nice even surface and spread it around if you don't feel like it's even enough. Two gallons of water is plenty enough for, I'd say at least one and a half garage. Again, the most important part of applying this particular type of paint is going to be prep. Prep, prep, prep. Prep your floor. If your floor is greasy, if it's dirty, it's not gonna stick. Now, this particular brand says it is a no peel promise. It will not peel. I don't know if it won't chip. I don't know if whatever the, the case may be where people are having problems and issues with this paint coming up. Um, it says, it says there right on the box, no peel promise. Okay, maybe they've uh, done something with the formula or maybe they are expecting you to prep the floor properly. If you're driving all day, you come home, those tires are hot and they get on that paint multiple times, I believe that's where most people are having the problems. That paint starts coming up, especially if it's not prepped properly. I can't say that enough. Prep, prep, prep. Okay, so I'm almost completely covered here. So I will let this set, start scrubbing it, make sure it doesn't dry. If it does dry, just put some more of this etching solution on there. If you don't have any more, well, I would, I'd probably water it down some. Just make sure it doesn't dry. That's a lot of work. Time to wash the etching out. Wash it real good. Okay, so the floor is etched. I etched the floor, let it set a little bit, scrubbed it some, washed that down, scrubbed a little bit more, and then I thoroughly washed all the etching out of here and I also squeegeed it out okay so uh, it looks good the etching has done its job the etching is going to basically if I'm uh, if I'm correct here and you can correct me if I'm not but uh, it's gonna make the concrete more porous okay it's gonna clean it make it more porous let that paint really adhere good to it so with that being said let's start painting Okay, so the floor's been prepped. We've done the degreaser, scrubbed, washed, scrubbed, washed, you know, all that stuff. And then I hit it with the etching, prepared that the way it should be. And now it's time to paint. Paint, so exciting. Goes on really quick, really easy. So, grab the paint out here. As you see, you have a side A and B. So you push A into B or B into A. The paint just goes past this sealed line and then you mix it up. Now, when you begin to pour this paint and then roll it on, 
Does it give you a roller as well? Let me show you that real quick. Kind of like a foam roller. Right there. Give you a foam roller. I'd suggest wearing gloves. This stuff could get all over the place, and if it does, it's not hard to get off. But it's a pain once you get it on yourself. You gotta go, you gotta stop what you're doing and go wash it off. Um, so let's get this mixed up and we'll start painting. <clears throat> Okay, so the last of the chips have been thrown on the floor, and I am complete. This job is done. I'll wait 24 hours, and then I'll check the tackiness, make sure it's hard, which it should be, and then we can start moving stuff over. Well, here it is. It's been 24 hours and the floor has set up. It's nice and hard. Now the box said that after 24 hours, you should be able to drive on it. This is a shop. I still have a lot of things to do here. I got to remove tape. I have to put up panels. I have to organize the shop. And uh, let me just tell you, uh, you, you got to prep. I can't emphasize that enough. Prepping the floor is essential. If you have a well prepped floor, this shouldn't peel, shouldn't come up, should last you years. So if I can do it, so can you. Thanks for watching.